This training module will review how to program an intermittent bolus with PCEA dose protocol. Traditionally, epidural infusions for pain control use the same method as an intravenous infusion, a continuous rate with or without a patient-controlled dose. The use of an intermittent bolus instead of a continuous rate offers another method for epidural pain control infusions. The intermittent bolus can be used with or without a patient-controlled dose. It is given on a program schedule that is determined by the value of the bolus interval parameter. These parameters, as well as others, will be further explained later in this training module. When selecting a protocol, you will need to select the therapy, the qualifier, and the drug names, and then enter the appropriate security code, after which you can edit patient-specific parameters and prepare the infusion for the patient. The protocol you will see during this training is just one example of a protocol configuration. Some facilities may choose to use profiles. Profiles contain a grouping of protocols. For example, profiles can be defined for specific care areas, etc. If your facility has chosen to use profiles, then selecting the correct profile will be part of the programming process. For this training, the code 123 will be used. There are two ways to begin programming the pump for a new patient. The first way is to power on the pump and press yes to answer the question, do you want to start a new patient that appears on the screen? The second way can be used if you have previously powered on the pump and answered no to the question, do you want to start a new patient? From the home screen, press tasks. Use the arrow keys to scroll up or down and highlight the start new patient task. Press select. If your facility has chosen to use profiles, the currently chosen profile will display. Profiles contain a grouping of protocols. For example, profiles can be defined for specific care areas. Press yes to confirm that the current profile is correct, or press no to select another profile. If you press yes, the Select Therapy screen appears and you can begin the protocol selection process. If you press No, the Select Profile screen appears. Use the arrow keys to scroll up or down and highlight the correct profile name. Press Select. Once the profile has been selected, the Select Therapy screen appears. Now you can begin the protocol selection process. Use the arrow keys to scroll up or down and highlight the therapy name that matches the physician's order. Press Select. The Select Qualifier screen appears. Notice that the therapy name appears in the protocol title bar. Use the arrow keys to scroll up or down and highlight the qualifier name that matches the physician's order. Press Select. The Select Drug screen appears. Notice that the qualifier name appears in the protocol title bar along with the therapy name. Use the arrow keys to scroll up or down and highlight the drug name or names, units of measure, and concentration that matches the physician's order. The highlighted drug selection may contain multiple drug names and associated concentrations. When the correct drug selection is highlighted, press Select. The drug selection is added to the protocol title bar so that the complete protocol name is displayed. If the drug selection contains a long, single drug name or multiple names and concentrations, the text will scroll on the screen. You are prompted to enter the appropriate security code. Once you enter the correct code, a confirmation screen is displayed. You are asked to confirm that the therapy, qualifier, drug, and drug concentration are correct. If any information is not correct, press No to return to the Select Drug screen. You may select a new drug, or press back once to select a new qualifier, press back twice to select a new therapy, or you can press back a third time to select a new profile if your facility is using profiles. If the profile and protocol name is correct, press Yes. 
The pump will program the settings for the selected protocol. It will then prompt you to do a review of the settings. Press Review. A screen is displayed with the current patient-specific parameters on a clipboard background. You may review and, if necessary, edit the parameters for your specific patient per the physician's orders, or you may press Exit to perform the review later. If you press Exit, the prompt to complete the review will appear after pressing the Stop Start key to start the pump. Any new protocol selection or edits made while the pump is stopped require a review to be completed and all the parameters to be accepted before the pump will begin running. For this training, the review will be done now. The first parameter is the intermittent bolus. The intermittent bolus is the infusion of a specific volume of drug at the programmed maximum delivery rate. Intermittent boluses are delivered at regular time intervals based on the programmed bolus interval. If the value displayed does not match the physician's order, press Select to edit. Note the blue Help text on the screen. The Edit screen appears. The value is presented next to a green and or amber bar graph. The amber area indicates the area outside the soft limit range. Setting a value in the amber area will change the color of the value from green to amber. Use the arrow keys to scroll the value up or down to match the physician's order. You can press and hold down an arrow key to make the value change more quickly. Tall man, short man numeric display is used to help distinguish between whole numbers and decimals. If the value you select on the edit screen is within the soft limits, you need to press Save. If the value you select on the edit screen is outside the soft limits, you need to press Confirm. You will be asked to confirm an override of a soft limit. Press Yes to save the value or press No to return to the edit screen. Now use the arrow keys to scroll to each patient-specific parameter and review the display value against the physician's order. If any value needs to be edited to match the physician's order, press Select and edit the value. The bolus interval is the amount of time that elapses from the beginning of one intermittent bolus to the beginning of the next intermittent bolus. The next bolus is the length of time between when the pump starts running and when the first intermittent bolus will be delivered. After the initial intermittent bolus is delivered, next bolus functions as a timer to count down the time remaining until the next intermittent bolus is programmed to deliver. The next bolus countdown does not begin until you start the pump. Once the pump has been started, the countdown continues even if the pump is subsequently stopped. The next bolus setting may be edited to adjust the timing of the next intermittent bolus as defined by the bolus interval. This can be done prior to beginning an infusion or during an infusion. For example, you can edit the next bolus setting to zero minutes to immediately deliver an intermittent bolus. All subsequent intermittent bolus delivery times will be determined by the bolus interval. When the next bolus is programmed to zero minutes and the pump is started, or when the pump is running and the next bolus has counted down and reaches zero minutes, the intermittent bolus delivery starts, PIB bolus is displayed in the status bar, and the next bolus time immediately resets to match the program bolus interval. Because the reset of the next bolus time occurs immediately, the value of zero minutes will only be seen if the pump is in stop mode.
Here are two examples of when the pump will deliver the intermittent bolus dose and what the pump will display based on how the bolus interval and the next bolus are programmed. In the first example, if bolus interval is programmed to 1 hour 0 minutes and next bolus is programmed to 1 hour 0 minutes when the pump is started, the intermittent bolus will occur in 1 hour. The status bar will display running. Next bolus will display 1 hour 0 minutes and will count down as time passes. In the second example, if bolus interval is programmed to 1 hour 0 minutes and next bolus is programmed to 0 minutes when the pump is started, the intermittent bolus will occur immediately upon starting the pump. The status bar will display PIB bolus. Next bolus will display 1 hour 0 minutes and will count down as time passes. The next bolus parameter can be edited only when the pump is stopped. You must start the pump so it is running at the time the intermittent bolus is due to deliver. Continue to scroll to the rest of the patient-specific parameters until all have been reviewed. If any value needs to be edited to match the physician's order, press Select and edit the value. Once all values are correct, use the arrow keys to scroll up or down to highlight each parameter and press Accept Value. A green check mark will appear next to each value you accept. Depending on your facility's policy, a second nurse may perform this step. All parameters must be accepted before the infusion can be started. Once all values have been accepted, the review is complete. Press Next. If a clinical advisory note has been entered for a protocol, it will appear on the screen after all values are accepted. Read the note and press OK. You may press Cancel and review the settings and clinical advisory note later before starting the pump. If you have questions about the clinical advisory note, contact your CAD SOLAS system administrator. The screen will display a message that says, Cassette not attached. Attach cassette before starting pump. You can now attach a CAD medication cassette reservoir or administration set to the pump, prime the tubing, attach the pump to the patient, and start the infusion. Or you can press Home to return to the Home screen and complete these tasks later. These tasks are covered in the Operations module of this training program.